Coming to you live from downtown Detroit, this is Benzinga's Pre-Market Prep with your host, Joel Elkanen. This is a volatile puppy here, isn't it? And Dennis Dick. I've been the penny. I will buy the stock for a penny. With everything you need to start your trading day. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to this Thursday edition of Benzinga's Pre-Market. Prep, Spencer Israel, Joel Elkanen. Uh, man, I, I I don't even know where to start with the show today. With, between uh, Avis having a great report and Nike being down, uh, we have many things we want to get to on our show. So let's just jump right into it. Our guest today is Mark Chaikin. He'll join us at eight fifteen to give us his take on the market. Joel. Uh, thoughts on this overnight session here? Uh, well, we went up and made a new high for the move at 27.98, and that fills my upside objective from the December 4th high of 27.94.50. So I'm going neutral. I'm not going bearish, but I'm going neutral today, and I want to see the market make a new closing high for the move. So today, very important for the market to close above 27.87. That's only five points away. Uh, I mentioned the upside, the downside. We've just been leaking here this morning. 2780 is your pre market low. Absolutely nothing there for that to be the low of the day. We kind of drifted lower during the uh, when Bullard was speaking, talking about interest rates. Uh, target on the downside for you folks would be uh, Wednesday's low at 73 and a quarter. Uh, crude over 57 bucks. Uh, we're up a nickel here at uh, 57.21, just inching our way towards that 50% retracement at $60. Uh, gold big reversal yesterday ahead of the Fed meeting. Gold futures got up to 12.50. Boom, turned around after the Fed meeting. Not quite 12.50. Uh, 13.49.80 was the high. Perhaps heading back towards 1300. Silver in the red by 27 cents. That's a big move for silver now at uh, 15.90. And uh, what happened to Bitcoin? Bitcoin we get over 4,000 yet? Let's take a look. Hanging there, trying to break out over 4,000. Uh, we don't have Triple D to bring in, but uh, we could bring in the other star of the show. Spencer, how you doing? Oh, God. Um, I'm doing all right. I, I had one of those nights where I, I couldn't. Couldn't really sleep that well, so I was up at like three in the morning just browsing Twitter, which is when I saw the injury uh, to Zion Williamson last night in the Duke UNC basketball game, and I I thought to myself, I actually thought to myself, there's no way that night that this has any impact on the stock. That's what I said to myself last night laying in bed, and I come in this morning and Nike, I can't believe it. Someone woke up at four a.m. Joel, you said it to just hit the stock down. <laughs> Did you see? I mean, obviously you saw the uh, the injury, right? Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and it's, it's not even a severe thing. He, I, I guess uh, they said after the game he had a mild knee sprain, so uh, bad, but it could have been a whole lot worse. And yeah, the, he had a shoe that essentially fell apart, a Nike shoe that fell apart in one of the biggest games of the year. Uh, but, but I mean, this, this, this is silly here. I mean, come on. All right. Well, there's we were we were kind of going back and forth on this on the uh, on the pre pre market show. And uh, first of all, I mean, overall, it's just not good for Nike, not good for sports. People were paying twenty nine hundred three grand for the ticket to that, right? Right. right. And then it was, a big, it was a big game. Him, yeah, it was a big game. Uh, and then to have him go out, I mean, there's other implications for this. I mean, first of all, it's not a real serious injury, but. I mean, the shoe falling apart on national TV and when the what they're supposed to be the biggest college game of the year. Yeah. I mean, that's negative. Yeah. And, um, you know, I'm sure there's some damage control. Is this, you know, is he going to shut it down for the rest of the year? You know, do you think that uh, uh, Zion's just not going to play? That's not going to be good for Nike if that happens. Uh, I don't think he's uh, attempting any kind of uh, lawsuit. I think that's a uh, heinous speculation. But whatever, someone got up, there was short Nike, got up at 4 a.m., started hitting some bids here, and we are trading down a buck 43. We just made a new, uh, got close up to the all time high. I'll just give you the pre market low, 83.01. Uh, so we'll use that as support. Maybe the market will shrug it off. Not much on the dailies there at 83.01. I will caution you, 82.87. 
was your February 11th low. So that's something to keep an eye on. And I keep an eye on the closing price from yesterday. If the market's really going to shrug this off, we'll go back to 84, 84 and beyond and things will be okay. Uh, it is benefiting Under Armour though, yeah, right? That, and that's, I think what's, that's what's making it even crazier. <laughs> but that's the market, Spencer. Haven't, haven't you realized it? You know, the silliest and most obscure things can move markets. I mean, there was probably a high frequency trading, you know, was watching I, I that and saw right. Zion William <laughs> injury and hit Nike at 4 a.m. I guess that's what, I that's guess what the right. world's come to. I guess you're right. I guess you're right. I don't, yeah. Um, I, I always think back to the the uh, Nike Kaepernick saga, which, which happened over Labor yes. Day, yep. that, that happened over Labor Day 2018. So Tuesday morning rolls or Monday night. Tuesday morning rolls around and Nike trades down what like two or three dollars and then within three days it was right back to where it was. So uh, these short term moves. So Labor Day that move was right around that was right around here. That was at, that was at the all time high actually. I think that was at the right at the, the all time high uh, end of, end of uh, August or early September there. And uh, it, it dipped in it, and then it, it was. Right. But this is different, Spencer. This is different. This is okay. Di- okay. You know why this is different no. to me? Why is it different? Because it's an active player. Okay. Okay. It re- I don't think have uh, have a has a contract yet with Nike, right? Duke has a contract, right? But he doesn't. He's an active player. You know. Uh, you know. I guess we know the full extent of the injury is just a sprain. But I mean, it's an active player that's looking for a deal, and uh, Mary Miller. Yeah, at 4 a.m., uh, that's when uh, the stocks open. So if you want to start uh, getting up super early to trade stocks, you can do it at 4 a.m. But uh, we'll see what happens. I mean, keep let's keep an eye on the closing price in Nike for today and see if this is actually going to have a long-term effect. Yeah, I'm going to be well, I'm going to be close to watching the the opening the first 15 minutes. I I, I want to see either either the stock come back or I, I mean I'd be I'd be shocked if if if, it, if this got down to what like. Let's look at a, a longer term chart. If this got back down to like eighty two, I'd be, I'd be, okay. I'd be, I'd be, I'd be yeah. even more surprised. I'd be even more surprised if if it, if, it, if that happened. Uh, but uh, this this to me seems like Paul and Monica, who's been on our show before, seen in money, always talks about the stupid stock move of the day. This to me is like this, it is this a stupid, candidate for it. This is a strong candidate for the stupid stock move of the day. But uh, that, that's that's enough, Nike. Uh, uh, yeah, what? I just want to say, uh, Spice made a good point. And a lot of times when we talk about moves like this, is it 100 shares? Is it odd lots? You know what? Uh, 90,000 shares have traded. And that's not insignificant. I think Nike's going to have a a hard time going green on the day. Uh, Dennis isn't here to uh, make a lunch bet, Spencer. But I'd say this doesn't go green on the day. Think about it. I'll think about think it. I'll think about it. I'll think about it. <laughs> think about it. Uh, let's go to the other, what I thought would be the show off this morning, uh, which was Car, uh, Avis Budget. Uh, I feel like they always surprise on their earnings report, and they did yesterday. They blew it away. Q4 EPS for Car, 53 cents versus a 37 cent estimate. Sales was in line at $2.05 billion. Their fiscal year EPS guidance uh, was. Uh, in line, and then the sales guidance was higher than estimates. So uh, a good, a great report, as you can see on the pre-market chart that I'm bringing up here, a great report here for Avis Budget. And isn't this kind of interesting because uh, didn't Uber like file for its IPO Lyft, today? Lyft. Yeah, Lyft in, in, and Lyft, Lyft, yeah. and Uber, and you know what's going on? You think this would be a negative for these car rental companies? And I think overall it has. I mean, if you pull up the monthly chart, oh, of yeah. car, it's not not pretty here. But they're liking the numbers this morning, and you just you're hitting some resistance here. A few times you tried to bust through thirty three. You're already at thirty two sixty nine. So there's your bogey above thirty three. It's keep going thirty four, thirty five, maybe pull a Garmin here, but. Sure, it looks like uh, someone's trying to wiggle out of some stock at 33. And we, when you have, when you look at car, you have to look at Hertz, HTZ, up in sympathy. Uh, HTZ, this stock I never understood with its reorgs and its different that you know, uh, different things. Is Icon? We should check to see if Icon's still in this one. But this is up a buck twenty six uh, at uh, eighteen fifty. 
Hmm. You're breaking out here above 1750. So I think I'd be more inclined to see if it comes back into the top of yesterday's range and the closing price as opposed to chasing it. This is a mover for, uh, you know, for a $17, $18 stock. This thing really whips around. Uh, Let's go to the monthly charts and see if we can find anything on the monthly worth looking at. No, last two months, we've just been hanging out at 17 and a half. So we are breaking out, uh, breaking out. You want another target on the upside. 1940 was your December high. And uh, wow, end of the year at 1365. So let's see what happens here. See if the sympathy move can carry the stock higher. Hertz is also reporting earnings Monday afternoon. So keep that in mind for anyone trading Hertz. Uh, these next couple of days here. Let's go to uh, another earnings report with Sympathy Plays is Norwegian Cruise Lines. They uh, reported this morning and delivered a beat. NCLH Q4 EPS, 85 cents versus a 79 cent estimate sales of 1.38 versus $1.39 billion. So a slight miss on that sales number, but a good EPS print. And their EPS guidance they gave for the quarter was higher than estimates. Their fiscal year EPS guidance was also higher than estimates. So great guidance and a uh, EPS beat for Norwegian. All right, up 288. Uh, just uh, made a move up to 56.99. Uh, the stock is, is recovering, coming back nicely. Uh, really, nothing clear to look at until you get closer to 58 dollars. Uh, you had uh, two monthly highs right around 58 in uh, September and October of last year. So if you're looking for another target through 57, that's 58. On the downside here, if you're a gap buyer. I, I don't know where the low of the uh, of the pre market session was way down at fifty four forty. So let's take take a look at uh, the other ones. Is RCL uh, moving off this one? RCL getting a little bit of a sympathy pop here. That's up near its high of the move. And then what's the other one? CCL. CCL. Yep. Those are the yeah the yeah. I mean, nice nice rallies on these in two thousand nineteen. Uh, this one's trading down a quarter. I don't know if it's bid up in the pre-market, but uh, CCL seems to be the lagger here on the good Norwegian cr- cruise line. And uh, CCL doesn't report earnings for like a, a, few, a few like a, like they're they're way late in the season, so not. And RCL already already had their report. Uh, where else should we go? We talked about Nike. We got you know what? It's a thirteen. So we got about a minute or so. But before oh wow! We take Time a flies. Break uh, for our guest in that minute. Let's look at where should we go here? You want to look at Walmart real fast? Walmart, uh, you, yeah. you noted, Joel. Uh, it's like the earnings report didn't even happen. Yeah. Exactly. And you got, if you really want to own it before the report, uh, you know, you always think about gap fills when these big stocks have moves like this. And it had the nice day, and I thought it might hang out for a day or two. You know, a little consolidation, and then you take out the low. But uh, no such thing. Uh, right back where it started from. Uh, for you Walmart uh, investors, let's just look at look at these two closes, and I think that's going to be your key moving forward. Uh, before the report, you had a close at ninety nine ninety nine. The day after report, ninety nine eighty eight. Right there, that psychological hundred dollar level. That's the bogey. We are trading in the red here, but uh, I think. Closing above 100 would be a good sign for this thing. If not, maybe a slow leak down to 96, 97. Does it, uh, and as I as I call Mark right now, but does it, you know, uh, hurt your confidence at all to see uh, what was objectively a good earnings report? And we saw the pop to see just give, those, does, give those gains yeah. back. It's like it's like what what has to happen for this stock to go higher here? You know what I mean? You know what it tells me is that. Uh, you know, if you do get any earnings, we got retail earnings next week, right? Yep, they're really starting to start to come in. I mean, we'll see if it will. Let's see if uh, you know, we have a trend here. If uh, if companies come up, uh, retail companies come up with uh, good earnings, you know, uh, fade up. We'll see if that's a trend for uh, retail. There's low expectations after like the the worst uh, retail sales number, like in yeah. 47. Mark Jacobs. Oh, we got Mark. There we go. How's it going, Mark? You are live on pre-market prep with Joel and myself. How are we doing? Joel and myself. Spencer. Hi, how are you? <laughs> how are we doing? <laughs> yeah. I'm great. Yeah. All right. Uh, Mark, I just we can get your thoughts on wherever you want to go, but I want to start with uh, 
have, have you seen the Nike chart this morning? Is this not the dumbest thing you've seen all week? Uh, yeah, I mean, these are buying opportunities if you like the stock. I just think, uh, yeah, you, you know my uh, feeling about the headlines. Ignore the headlines and stick to your plan. We don't have a bullish rating on Nike, but the stock's been strong. It's no reason to sell it. There we go. All right. I feel better already. Um, uh, Mark, why don't you give – we'll start with the overall market here. Uh, we, you know, we, you've been on our show every other week for the past uh, – for a while now, and you're, you've are you been consistently bullish here. Uh, are you still bullish going forward since we last spoke? I am still I am still bullish. I think the resistance at 2800, 2820 will be overcome at some point within the next month or so. And the reason I'm still bullish, and I, I believe there will be no retest of that 2350 level, is we had a perfect storm in December. We've been through some of the reasons. It was a period when there was no liquidity in the market. Traders go off on holiday and so forth. You had tax selling for the first time in 10 years. You had hedge fund liquidation. Uh, you had real nervousness about the Fed, and people panicked. The CNN Fear and Greed Index was down to about five. It's now up to 70. So everybody who's looking for a retest of those lows, which is the norm, when you get a decline of 10 to 20 percent in the S&P, typically do not make a V-shaped bottom. You come back down, test it. You don't have to go all the way down there. We're not going to see it this time because when we got through 2600, the market just kept going and earnings season has been a boon to the market. And I think the tip off about why it's different is that stocks are responding very well to good news and then they just keep going. Whereas in the previous two quarters, you saw a lot of profit taking. And then the final piece of the puzzle for me is the continued buying in the final hour of trading. That used to be called the smart money. This may be because of how ETF baskets are created. So people who are buying, let's say, the SPY during the day to get market exposure on the long side, the market makers have to create new baskets, although there has been an outflow from the SPY. But this continued buying in the final hour is an indication, and it's a complete reversal of what went on leading into the December 24th massacre when the market made its low. So for a whole series of reasons, I think we're going to see this market peak above 3,000 sometime in 2019. How, how influential do you think is uh, uh, e the ETF uh, side of the market, the, the ETF funds, how influential are they on, on just daily, daily uh, flows, daily buying and selling? I think they're more influential at the group and sector level. So, for instance, in biotech, if uh, there's negative news on biotech, uh, the immediate response is let's sell the biotech ETF. Uh, and that affects the good with the bad. The Amgens and the Biogens uh, get affected along with the smaller cap names. In the SPY, it's interesting because there's been net outflows from the SPY uh, over the last month or so, and it certainly hasn't held the market back. They're a much bigger influence than they were. Um, and I think in certain areas like the bonds, uh, where the underlying investments aren't as liquid, there could be a problem down the road. But I don't think it's something investors should really focus on. You've got to, you know, this is another one of those headline stories that can uh, put you off your game and off your plan. So I think you just have to stick with what you believe, and if you believe the market's going up, find the best stocks. Was there anything from yesterday's uh, Fed minutes that like that stuck out to you? I, I looked through it; didn't look like anything new to me. Well, and more importantly, is Bullard's comments. He's the head of the St. Louis Fed this morning. Uh, now he may be an outlier, but he was out there very publicly saying. I think interest rate hikes are over, and the balance sheet unwinds. Well, but over. hasn't, hasn't so he always it, been? Hasn't he always been the outlier, though? Uh, sometimes, sometimes, but clearly they said nothing to royal the markets. The markets were uh, pretty uh, mild and unvolatile, whereas normally there are big spikes up and down. Um, he said he thinks interest rates are too high, but he's in the minority there. But uh, the bottom line is that Donald Trump spooked Jerome Powell, in my opinion. He Jerome Powell backed down off the ledge. Uh, I think his verbiage was really uh, 
poorly chosen, along with Laura Mesta from the Cleveland Fed. And that's what led to the initial decline in October right. off the September peak. And that's what helped create that um, that very deep V-shaped panic bottom in December. These these comments from Powell about how they're going to raise rates come hell or high water really disturb the market. It's another reason why I think people should be bullish here, because that's off the table now. And China trade discussions are starting to look better. So well, some of these influences that were spooking people, the earnings recession, and look at the response to the earnings in the software sector. Cadence Designs, a stock I think I mentioned on here two weeks ago, CDNS, we recommended bullish power gauge rating 46. I actually told people take profits this week. Great earnings, it spiked up 8% yesterday before it pulled back a little, ended up 4.6. And that's at a 52-week high. Synopsis, SNPS, another stock in that group, reported earnings yesterday, spiked up and held the gain. There's underlying demand for stock here. You've got to buy stocks on pullbacks or hold your nose and buy the best stocks you can find, even if they're at highs. So people are buying stocks at 52-week highs. It's a big change from what we've been seeing over the last year. Uh, Mark, good question here from Spice in our chat. Uh, how do you generally view or how do you view how a stock action at the close impacts direction the following day? I don't think it necessarily impacts direction the following day. I think it gives you a tip off. And that's where check and money flow comes in. Check and money flow was created in 1981. And it's highly influenced by where a stock closes in its range and the volume that day. So closing high in the range is important. But I don't think it tells you a lot for tomorrow's trading, what it does is when you accumulate that over 21 days, you get taken money flow and that tells you a lot. If, it's, if you get big mountains of green, it means consistent accumulation. Now, the uh, exception is during earnings season. If you get a spike up on a good earnings report, but you close at the low of the day, that tells you there's likely to be some follow through on the downside the next day. And then another good one here from uh, Beer Guy. Do you believe that with this run-up that we've had, do you believe that a the solution to the trade agreement is priced into this market? Uh, actually, I don't. I think that um, there's probably another five to ten percent if we actually finalize a trade agreement. Uh, I think people realize that this is a uh, negotiating game and nothing is settled yet. Uh, now. There is some of it built in to the extent that the rally off the lows in December has been straight up and, and the tone of the China trade negotiations has helped that, in, including yesterday when Trump said, well, March 1st isn't really a hard deadline to start imposing these taxes. Now, he could change that. But I think that the combination of uh, you know the Fed easing off the pedal and Progress in the China trade. If there finally is a China trade, you may just get a blow off move to 3,000. Now, that could be the top. I don't know. But I think there's more to come. And uh, I don't think you'll see a big sell off, for instance, if you get a China trade agreement. Uh, I don't think it'll be a sell on the news. Do you Maybe have, a day or so, but I doubt it. Do you have thoughts here on the IWM? Uh, small caps are doing better. Uh, that was one of my points for today. Uh, Again, not a recommendation, but the Chaken, um, IQ Chaken small cap ETF is now the third best performing ETF over the last three months. It had been a big underperformer because of the financials, the, the overweight in financials. So in general, um, small caps are doing very well and mid caps. And that's another bullish sign for the market. Again, buy on dips if you're buying the market indices. I don't think you have to pay, uh, you know, these rally high prices, but clearly it's uh, time to get back into the small cap waters. And I, I favor the small cap software stocks. If you look within the IWM uh, for the software names that are doing well, you'll find some really attractive companies, companies like Brucker and Acellus and um, Cadence Designs, uh, CDNS that we referred to earlier. Uh, any other names in like non-tech names that that you have your eye on right now? 
Bank of America that made that my bullish stock of the week on Sunday. I think interest rates are going to go up in spite of the fact that the Fed isn't raising. I think there's going to be an upward push in interest rates. Um, Bank of America acted very well yesterday. It was up 1%. I thought maybe based on what the Fed said, you'd get a pullback and, and a buying opportunity. But I think on any pullbacks, you can buy Bank of America. Uh, very strong. Of course, Warren Buffett's added to his position in four banks, uh, JP Morgan, Bank of America, uh, U.S. Bank Corp and PNC, but the only one with a bullish power gauge rating is Bank of America. So uh, that's that's one of the reasons I picked that on Sunday. We're on the line with Mark Chaikin of Chaikin Analytics. Uh, Mark, uh, one question for you, or actually two. Uh, what are you making this move in Walmart? Uh, you know, you have the earnings, you have the gap and go, and everyone's feeling kind of good, and then. It gives it all back the next day. Do you just look at this as like a reset to buy the stock, you know, ahead of earnings and going to go back up? Or, you know, I, I just don't look at that as a good day to just to give all that back in one day. Thoughts on Walmart? Well, it wasn't. And the, the uh, that's a perfect example. The action on Tuesday where the stock closed at its low for the day uh, was a tip off that you'd get a pullback the next day. I think it spiked up into the area of the old highs at 105 in November. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is this is pretty much a pattern for the last four earnings reports. If you look back to May, it spiked up and then it pulled back for about six days. It was it had been weak prior to that. In August, when it was rallying, it spiked up and then it pulled back for about eight days and then consolidated for another two, three weeks. And then again in November, when the market was shaky, even with a good earnings report, uh, it kept going down. So this is fairly typical for Walmart. If you're looking to buy it, I think you've got a, a five to eight day window where you can just relax and let the stock come in. Our long term trend line is around 97, a uh, close 99.88. So that's a place where you might want to get into the stock. Uh, but this is very typical action for Walmart. I think the key takeaway for me, though, is that December retail sales report right. was just uh, an outlier, and that's going to be revised uh, upwards uh, when we get the next numbers. Interesting. So you're, you're bullish on uh, the retail stocks uh, going into uh, their earnings uh, extravaganza coming up over the next week or so? Not really. <laughs> Not really. I mean, there may be some positive surprises. You, you go and try and find a good, uh, you know, bullish rated retail stock that just don't exist. Uh, uh, but I don't think it's as bad as people think it is. Okay. Uh, I guess the only fly in the ointment could be bad news out of Europe today. German manufacturing shrinks at its fastest pace in six years. I guess the Deutsche Bank dropped another 1.6 billion on a bond bet here. Do you think that just makes the case for, you know, sell everywhere else and buy America? Or do you think this could uh, have some implications perhaps later in the year or in 2020? I think it's sell Europe, buy America. And look at the futures. They're barely budging here. They're down 4.75, you know, and, and you're right under 2,800 resistance. Two months ago, the futures would have been down 14, not four. Um, you know, will we get a global recession? I don't know. Are we going to get a recession in the U.S.? I doubt it. And I think what people are focusing on now, the, the earnings recession bears have been all over CNBC for the last month. Uh, their story is getting stale. And what I think you're seeing is the fact that in 2018, earnings were up 24% year over year in the U.S., and what did the stock market do? It was down 6%. That's called the price earnings ratio compression. Historically, in the year after you get a compression like that, where earnings are super strong, but the stock market's down, the market is up regardless of what earnings are in the US. So I think the US is an island unto itself right now. I don't think it's a case of the world sneezes and the US catches cold. Uh, you know, that's old think. And I know it's a global economy, but I think the markets are more interested in what the Fed's doing, the China trade negotiations. And the reality is first quarter earnings reports, you know, the, the fourth quarter earnings reports have been blowout. And companies have 
guided lower. Look at what the market's doing. It's rallied 450 points in the S&P with corporate guidance weak. What does that mean? The April earnings season is going to be another opportunity for the market to see companies outperform very pessimistic expectations. So I think the market's setting up for one more drive to new highs. I, I can't promise anybody anything beyond that, but I do believe we will see the market above 3,000. The other pattern we have is the um, election year pattern from the Midterm election year low, which this time came late in the year on December 24th, which was 23.50. The average gain 12 months out is 30%. That's the average gain. So 30% on top of 23.50 puts you above 3,000. And so that combined with the swag breadth thrust that we got in January, which speak very well to returns six to 12 months out, the McClellan oscillator and summation index reaching the kinds of levels that suggest great strength three to six months out. It all sets up here. If, you, if you're a bear and you're taking money off the table, you're going against the trend of the market and where I think the historic patterns tell you we're going. By the way, weekly jobless claims just reported 216 uh, versus an expected 229. That's another sigh of relief that people can heave because increase in jobless claims is one of the four indicators that does harbinger a recession. And that's the only one that was even chirping. The others are sort of sleeping. Uh, Mark, one more here. I'll let you run. Are you, are you following the, the correlation between stocks, bonds, and gold with uh, bond? And this is a question from, uh, from our chat. Bond rates are low. Gold is rallying and stocks are rallying. At, at, at some point, you'd, you'd have to assume that something, one of those has got to give, right? Well, historically, they don't move in lockstep. They move contra. But uh, the U.S. dollar is having an impact on that. Remember, that, you know, when the dollar is strong, commodities tend to be weak. Uh, and the dollar has been bouncing around between uh, the previous 52-week highs and, and then some uh, profit-taking. Um, I, I'm not a big um, sort of cross-market analyst, so I would take what I okay. think with a grain of salt there. Um, focusing mainly on stocks here and the fact that interest rates go up may, may start rising. And that's, you know, that that's something that tells you the bond market may be selling off here sometime soon. All right. We've been on the line with Mark Chaikin, founder and CEO of Chaikin Analytics. Mark, as always, thanks for the time and I'll speak to you in a couple of weeks. Spencer, thanks very much, Joel. Good right. trading. Right. Okay. We'll talk thanks to you everybody soon. on the call. Thanks. All right. We're uh, we're continuing to move in the red here, Spencer. Uh, down seven and a quarter handles here, seven and a half handles at seventy nine fifty. Philly Fed index minus four point one versus estimate of plus fourteen. Uh, not a big uh, follower of the Fed uh, Philly Fed index, but that doesn't look good. I saw um, uh, durable goods uh, down as well, or uh, below the current estimate here. So. I guess we're talking about interest rates. I guess a little people worried a little bit about inflation here, uh, but whatever the case may be, the spoos are trading in the red, continuing to make new lows on the session. Uh, Wednesday's low is your target, 2773.25. All right, let's go back to our list uh, of earnings. Uh, we had Domino's this morning getting hit uh, off their report, DPZ, uh, the Q4 EPS of $2.62, versus a $2.70 estimate, sales of $1.08 versus $1.1 billion. So a slight miss on both the EPS and sales numbers for the Q4. Uh, they gave some retail sales uh, growth outlook for the next three to five year period. They said that it'll be, they'll be up eight to 12% uh, and US commerce will be up three to 6% in that time. But uh, Q4, uh, EPS and Q4 sales miss is the headline here for Domino's this morning. Domino's pizza doesn't deliver. Uh, we got a spike low. Well, first I want to note street leading the right way into this report. Uh, we've sold off uh, five out of the last six sessions here. Closed near the lows yesterday. Spike low took you down to 252.01. Boy, oh boy, you're getting into a thin area there. I guess your real support would be down at 243.50. Uh, you had uh, two lows right there, actually three lows right there, 
four lows. So that's my major support uh, moving forward. Good 18, 20 points away from there. So I think today you might just have to bank on the pre-market low because we are 12 bucks above that. And uh, man, I haven't looked at uh, Papa John stock in a while. That's been pretty volatile. That's a PZZA, correct, Spencer? Mm -hmm. um, man, what a volatile thing. The deal was off. They crushed it. It came all the way back to 45. Wow, kind of quiet consolidation except for that one spike over 45. I'm not sure what that news was, but uh, not great news in pizza land. Uh, Johnson and Johnson also getting punished here this morning, not because of earnings, but because they received subpoenas from federal agencies for the first time around uh, their uh, litigation related to the asbestos in the talcum powder uh, case that is ongoing here. So this is another in a continuing series of headlines that we're going to get uh, on j, j This is not a story. This won't end anytime soon. I and it, it recovered. I think I remember that on the day that it had that news, I think it sold right around 132, 133. So I was kind of using that as a marking point. But uh, they're hitting it this morning. It is a subpoena. Uh, 133 is your pre market low. A lot of people trapped in this one. Thick stock. You will not be able to go up and fill the gap here. 135.73. Uh, boom, boom, what do you have here? Uh, I, better support for me on this one is at the 131.50 area. You had three lows at the beginning of February. So two points away. Uh, not good news. Whenever subpoenas are involved and this is an ongoing issue until this is reserved, this is a headline that you come with owning the stock and not much you can do about it until it's resolved. If, if you're wondering uh, what day the story broke and you want to look about the last time we had a significant headline, it's that gigantic red candle in December. That, that was the, uh, the, the day that uh, December 14th, when the first headlines we got about this lawsuit uh, really came out with regards to, or at least uh, the, that, that was the day that, uh, that, that the FDA came out with their report that, Johnson Johnson knew about everything. So uh, still have not recovered yet, but we've been slowly creeping higher. Uh, today's action is not going to help, though. Uh, uh, let me cover uh, for, it looks like, Carolis here. Uh, looking at TTWO, uh, this as okay. support here. And uh, yeah, we're trading up 63 cents. Uh, you did match uh, the low of the move, 86.91. And then you had 86.90. So if you want to lean on that, uh, you know, if you're trying this from the long side here, I mean, that's definitely your bogey. But uh, if the fact that you could, if you take that level out here, you could be under 80 bucks. I see 78.10 is your August 217 low. So I think for this one, maybe I'd put an alert. If it gets back over 94 and holds 94, it'd be showing some strength here. But uh, trying to pick a bottom in this one, uh, after its last report, volatile stock. I just want to keep a look at uh, EA as that continues to sink here. A third day uh, in the red, back under $100. Looks like it wants to work its way uh, into that big, crazy candle. I think that was earnings day or the day after. And then Activision, I know you had a run up towards 47 that's starting to leak now, but uh, figure your 50% retracement on this one, folks. You could be right there right now in ATVI. Uh, just saw a headline across the uh, Benzinger Pro News Wire. Canopy Growth uh, had to correct a figure from their earnings report, which was, uh, what, last week there? They, correct, they yeah. erroneously reported that their nine-month uh, adjusted EBITDA uh, loss was $16 million, not or sorry, $69 million is what they said. They should have said $155 million. So they corrected the figure from $69 million to $155 million for their adjusted EBITDA loss. Uh, and, it, and they said, they have, don't worry, the rest of the report's right. But anytime you have to come, come uh, back and correct, yeah. <laughs> correct your numbers there, I don't know. You know what that, you know what they call that? They call that the Mattel trick. That's what that is is when you have earnings and everyone buys up your stock and then, oh, whoa, we got lower guidance, five days lower. But uh, just real quick, uh, canopy growth here. I mean, it's not horrible news, but you kind of wish they would have had that well, information. Well, they missed it. I mean, as Brent just pointed out to me, I mean, look at the amount that they missed it by. They said it was 69. 
million. It was actually 155 million. So it wasn't like they were off by a little bit. They're off by a lot. <laughs> yeah, maybe uh, maybe they were partaking in the product a little bit oh, when gosh. they uh, get. Come on, Joel. <laughs> I'm sorry. I mean, come on. You got to have those stupid jokes every uh, every once in a while. Uh, but uh, you got some spike lows here to the $44 area. 44 even uh, is your pre-market low. That's not enough for me on this one. I'd be looking who, under 44. The only thing is if you can't hold 44 here, your next pair of daily lows don't come into the $42 area. So I, I don't like that news. I don't like that news yeah, at all. Not not. Great news. All right. I, I only have uh, we had a lot of earnings and not a ton that I really care uh, super strongly about. So we'll maybe do one or two more and then we'll go to questions from uh, the chat. And let's go to the one that I had on my list to get to that we hadn't done yet was a uh, cake. Cheesecake Factory oh, yeah. reported uh, yesterday after the bell. Uh, sort of pop and then drop here. So the Q4 EPS, 60 cents versus a 62 cent estimate sales of 585 versus 598 million dollars. So a miss on both the EPS and sales in the Q4 for Cheesecake Factory. Have you ever been there, Spencer? You ever been to a cheese cheesecake yeah, factory? Of course. Huge portions, yeah. man. They got to cut. If they cut down on their portions by 10%, they would save I money. Mean, they would save money. <laughs> they would say, well, I'd buy the stock if they like came out and said that. Uh, yeah, they initially liked the report and it bumped its head up against 48 a few times, but uh, sellers didn't like that at all. Uh, those were the sellers that were selling at 47.68. Uh, that was the recent high of the move. Uh, kind of been all over the map on this one. So, Let's look at yesterday's low. I just use yesterday's range, kind of had a tight range, uh, 4601 to 4680. Let it shake out over that. Uh, but if you do get up to the 4750 area again here during the regular session, just be aware that there is a double top there from that would be what Friday, Tuesday, Friday, and Tuesday's trading. So we'll keep an eye on that. Uh, your big support level to hold. Three out of your last four lows at $46. So consolidation ahead of the earnings and not really moving much off the report. All right. There was a couple of stocks that uh, I promised yesterday I would write down and we'd cover them today. So let's do that. And then we can cover anything you throw in the chat uh, right now as well. Uh, and let's start with, uh, start with Shopify. Okay. All right. Uh, the chop in shock, uh, boom, boom, it had that great, uh, rebound off the, the earnings came back and made a new all time high at, uh, one eighty five oh seven. I'll just do some tracking here. And I see that the all time closing high was at one eighty one thirty. So I'll just keep an eye on that. We did close below it. Uh, if you're looking to exit the stock or you're looking for a continued move higher, I look for it to close above that 181.30. Uh, 177 is pretty good support in this. Uh, your last two lows uh, at that area, 177.04, 177.46. Looks like a little leak after that great comeback after the earnings. Uh, let's go to NVTA. They reported Tuesday after the bell. A smaller name we didn't cover, but it was it was mentioned yesterday. NVTA. Uh, I'm sorry. What's the symbol? NVTA. NVTA. Uh, well, I hope the person was bullish yesterday that was looking at this one. You had a gap and go uh, off the earnings. Big old move this month from 14 to 1934. You're trading at 19. Where are you trading at here? You're trading at 1905. Really, it's going to be hard to tell where this one is going to stop on the upside. Kind of a newer issue. I think if I had this long in my portfolio, which I don't, I'd just be looking at the lower that gap from yesterday, 1741. If it gets down there, I'd be a little bit concerned about falling into the gap area. Let's challenge. Uh, we're above yesterday's high. So all looks good here in this one. Quite extended move. Let's see if it breaks that winning streak. How many days of a winning streak do you have here? You have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven day winning streak. And uh, it's going to make for 12. So keep an eye on that closing price today. NVTA. 
Here's one that someone is watching ahead of their earnings report. Into it, they report today after the bell. I N T U. Let's take a look. Don't they always beat and like go up like 10, 12 points or uh, something like that? As far as always uh, beating, let's see. Let's look at the calendar. Uh, yeah, they generally always beat on their estimates. I'm looking at a calendar going back um, eight, eight years. Huh. Eight years, and they they almost never miss. So yeah, they they they, <laughs> yeah. Pre- they pretty consistently beat. Ah, uh, boom! New all time high yesterday at two thirty six forty seven. All time closing high at thirty five ninety seven. You're just trading right there right now. So I mean, if you're nervous ahead of the report, you could take some of the chips off the table. I just know this is a big mover off the reports. Uh, all time high two thirty six forty seven. Really, the highest low that it's ever made is 33.72. If you're looking to protect some profits there, perhaps a, a sell stop under that if you're worried about going into a report. But uh, sure, looking good. And here's another one after to, uh, after the bell today. Baidu. Baidu, B-I-D-U. Uh, they do report. You mentioned that. Uh, 172 even. Uh, the only thing I'd see in this one is if you get up uh, near 177, uh, you had a couple highs, 76.54, 76.89. And it's just, it's poked its head up there a few times uh, in February and then uh, kind of quickly gave it back. So solid breakout over 176. Uh, monthly chart doesn't look great, but it sure looks like it's trying on the downside here. Man. Uh, double bottom at 169. So if you're looking to protect some profits, 169 even, 169 20. Those were your lows from Tuesday, or excuse me, uh, Friday and Tuesday. Where that day off on Monday really, uh, yeah, I know. really, it really messes me up when I try and do, uh, try and give you the successive days in a row. Uh, two people in a row asking about DBX. Oh, they're they're also reporting. Okay. And uh, boy, this stock has made a nice comeback. Can't really tell you anything negative about this one. Ah, and we're close to it right now, but man, oh, there's just been a really persistent buyer here at the 2530 area. I know we tried to leak a little bit towards there yesterday. We were down 50 cents, but uh, you know, you had a slow, steady run up and it's had the consolidation after every one of these, uh, these rallies, here's your consolidation period, more on the downside. So I'd like to see this stay above 2530. Uh, some other names that I wrote down from yesterday, Alibaba. The Bobster, that's come a long way back here, trading up again, up 60 cents, 171.30, uh, bumping your head against 173. And I'd use that as a resistance point. Uh, highs, uh, February 6th, 173.09, and then yesterday, 172.68. A uh, series of higher lows. You've had two higher lows, uh, 170.61. The only thing about you know that calling that actual support here is you have like a four-buck drop to 166.50 if that 170.61. But uh, real, real nice rebound here. I uh, also just want to note that your, your monthly highs – from December and January, we're at 170 as well. So you're kind of at the top of a three months trading range. So if you want to give it a little bit of a longer term number, holding 170 here, definitely good for Alibaba. Uh, if not, I expect a little bit of a retreat. Here's a name that we don't discuss too often Funko, F N K O, the most fun stock there is. What do they do? You know what they do. They make like toys for based on like. T- movies and tv shows and stuff oh it's, why did you have to tell me that spencer because that automatically makes me bearish well no, it, no. all right i <laughs> all right i don't know <laughs> ah man did they do a stock split or a reorg because i got a, i got it up at 166 here i don't know what's going on with the stock but we'll just go with the trading action here since November of 2017, and it's had just a, a nice, you know, you didn't get rich owning it or anything, but uh, the only thing I can see on the radar here, wow, this is a weird chart, is uh, 2130. 
Uh, that was your high back in February, or excuse me, in um, in November. So I look at that as a resistance point. If not, things really open up uh, to the upside here. Your next monthly high doesn't come into twenty four forty. Can I can I make you bullish then? Uh, they make games for Fortnite. Does that change your mind at all? Okay, okay, <laughs> okay, okay. Let's do Roku. I'm okay, they, Roku, they, Roku, they Roku. Uh, woo, Roku climbing its way back. Uh, got to report this thing moves slow, steady climb. I mean, you can't complain about that. People are anticipating uh, a good report. Uh, we're trading what up twenty seven cents at fifteen ninety one. Uh, if you're looking to trim here. Uh, your highs in the last two sessions are 55, 27, 54, 49. So maybe split those two, maybe call 55 bucks, uh, a potential resistance level 55, 27 has been the high of the recent move. And just out of curiosity, what we made a 77 high in a 30 low or 29 low. So what did, what did you have? Let's go with what a uh, 35 point move there. 17 and a half, you add that up, you're through the 50% retrace band. Ah, I don't know. This is a wild one. I'm looking at the resistance at 55. I don't think my air bath was off on that one, folks. So for you at home, get out your own calculator, figure your own 50% retrace band, and use that mo moving forward here in Roku. Uh, someone asked about uh, NetEase, N-T-E-S. I believe they reported yesterday after uh after the bell uh I don't, I don't know how comparable those numbers were so i don't want to read them and you guys yeah you guys are giving me some tough stocks here uh there's some movers what are we doing we're trading down 356 uh this is an eight we're not the primary market here so perhaps some of this price action has already been uh factored in uh just on the 15 minute chart here someone likes it at 229 but it ain't bouncing off 229. So if in fact you take out that level, uh, boom. Well, you got a couple daily levels there, 229. So just hanging right there. This thing looks a little weak to me. Uh, your three day low is 226. And then we had a question about Chipotle. Oh, okay. How is that doing with 600? Uh, let me pull it up here on the chart. Oh, this is nice. Nice consolidation after the report. Uh, boy, a trading range, you can call it that. You've had a trading range between, this is real interesting, between the day it hit the high of the move at 6.12.60, and the low was made on that day at 5.92.55. Not quite in the middle here, but uh, I look uh, for the next move. This one will be the break out of the trading range. Uh, what's important for this to do over the next couple of days, post another close over 605.89. Uh, uh, that's been the high close of the move. That was three days ago. So that's what I'm using as my resistance point. And uh, below that 592, or excuse me, 593.66 low, uh, not much until you get into the lower 580s. And... Uh... Fang, I assume you're referring to Diamondback Energy and not the Fang stock. So let's look at ticker FANG. All right. That's uh I think this one's actually an energy stock yep. and it's been moving up nicely with oil. Oh man, what am I seeing on the charts here? If you have an upside target, I like to see this get to 108.94. That was your high on January 9th. Uh 107.93 is a target ahead of that. On the downside, if you're trying to protect some profits in this stock, uh, maybe something to uh, sell stop or uh, take a look at it. If it breaches 103, 103.20 and 103.49 are your lows from the last two sessions. Um, oil moving up is uh, not, not hurting this uh, the stock much either. Dr. Scott thinks the spews are, looks like they're going to puke here. I don't know. Do they ever puke, Dr. Scott? Let's uh, let's see if we can go up uh, this morning and challenge uh, that closing price. I'd be more inclined there to initiate a lower risk short. You have that closing high for the move at 87. And that's also mid-range on the session. So as we move 55 minutes into the show, 
I'll adjust my uh, my resistance. My first target here on the upside is that close in 27.87. We have some M and A this morning, Joel. Uh, it a uh, company is being taken private. Uh, uh, Attunity A T T U is the ticker. Is getting acquired by Click for twenty three fifty a share. The stock uh, is halted and has been halted. Uh, and I don't have any ETA on when the halt will resume, when the stock will resume trading. But uh, twenty three fifty is the takeout price for ATTU. ATTU is getting taken out. Okay. Yep. Uh, ATTU. This one I've never typed in before here. And it's not moving. What, well, what's it, the well, price? Well, it's, it's halted. It's halted. So it's halted. Twenty three fifty. So and it's getting taken private. Wow. What a what a deal if you owned this yesterday in 1993. I mean, I'll just keep an eye on that price when it reopens and That's see what happens. Not, uh, well, I guess it's not too bad of a premium because this stock, you know, is how long has it been around? Uh, it's been around for a while and not quite the old time high. Uh, the old time high in this one, uh, this probably did some reverse splits. What do they do, Spencer? You know what they do? Uh, some software application company uh the the it just came through that the stock will resume at 9 10 eastern time so in 14 minutes we're going to get a resumption on att okay. so uh get your fingers ready <laughs> on the buy button is all i would say um let me see here Let, let's run through a couple ratings that caught our eye this morning uh we have us steel catching an upgrade at barenberg i thought that was interesting a uh, couple of downgrades of note. Wedbush downgrading uh, both Lennar and Dr. Horton this morning. Uh, Garmin is catching a downgrade from a longbow. I guess they thought that the move yesterday was uh, about where they as, – as about as high as it should go. So they're downgrading Garmin this morning. And Biogen getting a, down, a downgrade at Stiefel here. Those were the ratings that caught my eye. Ah, uh, boom. Anyone interested in any of these in particular? I can take a look at them. I mean, you know, the Garmin one, I, I respect the analyst for, you know, okay, you know, we had a big move, but, you know, how much faith how much am I going to put in this analyst? I don't know. Let's just keep an eye on the closing price from yesterday. Closing price was right near the high, 83.06, 83.30. So, See if that acts as resistance today. Uh, this thing starts to go in the retreat. I uh, just figure your daily pivot from yesterday, but that uh, kind of kind of respects the call here. Will a if no one else wants anything? All right, Spice is asking about X here and uh, trading up fifty five cents. Did you say it had an upgrade or something? Yeah, or upgrade this morning what? from uh, Berenberg. Let me get the exact, nice, nice. Let me get the exact upgrade here. Uh, Upgraded to buy. All right. Well, it got it. That's a big move for it. Uh, so uh, nice premium and trading at 55 cents. I don't know how much this upgrade is actually going to be worth. 25.59 is your pre-market high uh, hanging right up there right now. So that's what you want to see. It just barrel right through there. Uh, your dailies, uh, your dailies are confirming that uh, 2476 is uh, uh, a potential resistance level. Nice, slow, steady rally up here. Kind of, you know, no couple big days, but uh, nice move here. Let the, if you're long it, let the Berenberg, uh, you know, uh, upgrade work for you. If you're short it, oh, I don't know, 2451, you could come in a little bit. Uh, if it came into the closing price at 24 or even, I'm sure the late day shorts from yesterday uh, would be happy to see that level. What about what about Wendy's here? And we'll wrap up with this one. But they reported okay. they had earnings uh, here uh, this morning, and they they the earnings report wasn't great. The EPS beat by a penny, 16 cents versus 15 cents, and uh, the sales missed 397 versus 400 million dollars. Uh, they also uh, reported 225 million dollar buyback plan. And the stock is getting punished here. The, they had the big, uh, the big green candle on uh, exactly a month ago, uh, or a little, a little under a month ago, January twenty first, and uh, we're right back down, pretty much erasing the last month's worth of gains here. Yeah, uh, seventeen bucks. Uh, we did get below it here in the pre market, traded down to sixteen eighty eight. 
the dailies are not giving you much there. So if you're looking to lean on that, uh, that low, can't tell you there's really much uh, support there, but a little bit, a uh, little bit lower. Man, if this thing ever gets into the lower 16s, and I'll just call it 16 and a quarter, because I count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven lows right in that area. So uh kind of leading near the pre-market low, but if this gets in the lower 16s here, uh a lot of support uh for Wendy's. All right, uh, we covered a lot of stocks today. If we missed anything, we'll keep them on our list for tomorrow, but that'll do it for today's show. Thank you to our guest, uh, Mark Chaikin. Thanks to all of you who joined us in our chats on YouTube and premarket.benzinger.com. If you missed any part of our show, catch our podcast on iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, TuneIn, and uh, Google Podcasts. On tomorrow's show, we'll be joined by Sean Emery, the founder and CIO of Avery & Company and author of The Market Meter uh, dot com. But in the meantime, please remember all the information from our show is for informational purposes only and not meant to be investing advice. Hope all you folks have a good rest of your day and uh, we'll see you on Friday for the final show of the week. Have a good one.